Hey, this is Chris Plush from CG Masters, and in this part of this tutorial series, we're going to be baking normal maps for our low-poly knife here. Now, some of the things I'll be going over is how to make sure your normal maps and your meshes look completely consistent no matter what software you want to use them in, because some different software like Unity or the Unreal Engine or Substance Painter might interpret triangulation a little bit differently and also might deal with normal maps a little bit differently. So I'm going to show you how to bake normal maps for whatever software you want to use it in, and I'm going to show you how to make sure your meshes look totally consistent among or throughout all the different softwares. All right, well, let's just get to work, and I'll explain things along the way. So let's press numpad 1 for front view, and the first thing we'll do now is just triangulate all of our meshes using a modifier. Because some programs triangulate faces differently, to ensure that our mesh and its normal map look the same in all software, we're simply going to triangulate it in Blender before exporting. This is important because normal maps are calculated based on the object's geometry. So Blender will actually triangulate this knife when it bakes the normal map. Then if we export the knife without triangulating it first to other software like Substance Painter, for example, Substance Painter will then triangulate the faces differently than Blender, and then it won't display our normal map the way we intended. So to avoid problems like that, we'll just triangulate it in Blender. So I'll right click on the knife blade to select it, go over to the modifiers, click add modifier and add in triangulate. Then if you press the Z key for wireframe, you can see the triangulate modifier in action. And now let's copy that modifier to the other objects. So select the handle first, hold shift, select the handguard, and then select the blade. And now we can press control and L for the make links menu and select modifiers. And that'll copy our blades triangulate modifier to our other two objects as well. So now everything is triangulated. And the next step is to make sure that everything is set to smooth. That's important for the normal, the normal baking process. So I'll press the T key, select all of our objects, and click on Smooth Shading. All right, now we can go ahead and start the baking process. And there is actually a cool add-on called Text Tools, which has a lot of really useful baking tools in it. And I'll link to that in the description if you want to play around with it. But for this tutorial, we're just going to go ahead and do things manually. All right, now we need to create an image to bake the normal maps to. So let me drag this window over. And over here in our image window, click on the New button at the bottom, and now we can create a new image. And let's rename this to knife underscore normal. And let's change the width and height by clicking on the width field and dragging it down to the height field. That way we can change both at the same time. And by default, Blender doesn't bake normal maps with anti-aliasing, so we'll have some jagged lines. So the way to smooth out those lines is just to bake it rather large and then shrink it down afterward. So we're going to bake this at 4096 by 4096. And we don't need an alpha channel for this. And let's make sure to enable 32-bit float. Now that part is very important. By default, Blender would bake this at 8-bit, and that's not enough color information to give us a high-quality normal map. 8-bit normal map baking would result in things like color banding instead of smooth gradients, and that would be really, really bad for really reflective surfaces. And I'll demonstrate that in a couple minutes as well, but I just want to get this bake process rolling. So just for now, just click on 32-bit float to enable it, and then click on OK to create our new image. So here's our really large image we're going to be baking to. Now the next step is to make sure our normal maps are baked with the right color information because things get a little different when you're baking at 32 bits. So let's press the N key for the right side toolbar and let's switch color space up here from linear to non-color. That's going to make sure we get the correct information baked into our normal maps. And keep in mind you only have to change that value if you're baking at 32 bits. If we leave that at default and bake at 32 bits, it results in this. And these colors aren't correct for a normal map, so things aren't going to look right in the end. It should look more like this. So let's make sure we set color space to non-color, and we're good to go. So let's press the N key now to get rid of the toolbar, and now I think we're ready to bake. So first, let's make sure our render is set to cycles render. That's what we'll be using to create these normal maps. And in order to make a normal map on this particular image right here, we first have to load this image into an image node. So to do that, we'll first have to create a material. So I'll select the knife blade, Go over to the materials and click on new. Now to edit the nodes for this, let's click on the diagonal lines up there, and drag it to the left to split the window, and let's change the right side over to the node editor. Now we have the nodes for that newly created material. And I'll press the N key to get rid of the right side toolbar. So let me zoom in and I'll press shift and A for the add menu. And from the texture submenu, I'll add in an image texture. And I'll drag it right over there. Now from this menu right here, let's load in the image we just created called knife underscore normal. And as long as this image node is selected, then this is the image that will be baked to when we actually go to bake things. All right, so let's go over to our render buttons now and scroll down to the bottom and expand the bake panel. This is where the magic happens. So let's first change the bake type over to normals so we can bake normal maps. 
And the swizzle options right here are actually very important. And the middle one in particular, which is basically the green channel, keeping it at plus Y is for applications that use OpenGL, which includes Blender and Unity. And if we switch that to negative Y, it'll bake normal maps for DirectX applications, including the Unreal Engine. So this is what you want to change if you want to create normal maps for different software. We're going to keep it at plus Y so we can create a normal map to be used in Blender and Unity. And now let's go down here and enable selected to active since we'll be baking our high poly object on top of our low poly object. And let's also increase ray distance to 0.1. Now basically what ray distance means is how far away other faces can be from our low poly object and still get picked up in the baking process. If we left this at zero, then our high poly object and our low poly objects faces basically need to be perfectly overlapping in order to get baked. So setting this value a little bit higher just gives it some breathing room. All right, now let's hold shift and click on the first layer there. So both of our layers are enabled. And in order to bake selected to active, first we select our high poly object, then we hold shift and select our low poly object since that's what we're gonna be baking to. And now let me drag this over so we can see the image window more. And let's make sure our image node texture here is selected since this is the image that's going to be baked to. And now we just click on bake. All right, so here are the results of our first bake and everything's looking great. Now, basically what we're gonna do is just repeat that process for the other objects and have them all bake onto this one image here. But first we're gonna make sure that we save this. So let's go to the image menu, click on save as image. And I'm gonna keep all of these options over here as default. We're gonna save it as a PNG, which is a lossless format and allows us to save at a higher bit than eight. But you'll notice that we can't save it as a 32 bit, which is what we rendered it at. And that's okay because 32 bit contains a massive amount of information and we really don't need that much for a normal map. Saving it at 16 bit still saves enough information that we get an extremely high quality normal map. So I'm gonna save this as a PNG at 16 bit and I'll press enter. All right, let's continue on down the line to the handguard now. Now the first thing I'll do is select the low poly handguard. I'll go over to the materials and I'll give it the same material as our knife blade. And I'm giving it the same material because we need this selected image node right here in order to bake to this image. So now we can go over to the bake buttons and let's select our high poly handguard first, then hold shift and select the low poly one. And before we hit bake, let's make sure to disable the clear option. If we leave that enabled, it's gonna clear this entire image before baking and we'll lose our knife blade normal map data. All right, so I think we're all set and now let's click on bake and it should show up right up there. All right, so that worked out perfectly. Our image is almost complete. We just need to bake the handle now. And we'll do this the same exact way. Let's select the low poly handle Go over to materials, give it the same material, make sure the image texture node is selected. Then we'll go over to the bake buttons, select high poly, hold shift, select low poly, and then click bake. All right, so that's all there is to it. There's our complete normal map. And let's make sure that we save this now. So I'll just go to image, save image. All right, so now that we're actually done baking the normal map, let's set up a proper material so we can actually visualize it in cycles. And we're done with the image window right here. So let me click on those diagonal lines Drag it to the right in order to join those windows together. And let's press two on the number row just to show our low poly objects because that's all we need now. Now I know I said I'd go over things like why we were baking in 32-bit instead of 8-bit and I still will after the tutorial. So stick around if you're interested in that information. But first we're gonna just work on that material to visualize things. So let me drag the node editor over. And right now all of these objects have the same material which we have open over here. And the first thing we'll do is switch our diffuse node to a principled node. So I'll select the diffuse node and then press shift and S for the switch type menu and switch it over to a principled node. Now, if that hotkey doesn't work for you, that's because it's specific to the node wrangler add-on and to enable that add-on, go to file, user preferences, and then the add-ons tab, type in node and make sure node wrangler is enabled. It's just gonna give you a bunch of really useful hotkeys to use in the node editor. So now in order to get this image texture to be interpreted as a normal map, we first have to switch color to non-color data. And now we have to run this through a normal map node. So let me drag that down here and I'll press shift and A. And from the vector menu, I'll add in a normal map node. Drag it right in the middle there. Now we simply connect the color socket to the color socket, then the normal socket to the normal socket, and we are good to go. So let's go over to the 3D view, hover over that with the mouse and press shift and Z to get a preview render going in cycles. And right now I just have a gray world and I don't have any lights, so nothing's really being lit very well. But you can tell the normal map is working, but what I'm gonna do now is just set up an HDR world environment in order to light this knife properly. 
Now, if you don't have any HDR images to use, you can download some amazing ones for free over at hdrihaven.com. Link is in the description. And once you find a good HDR image to use, let's go over to the world buttons, click on use nodes, and click on the button next to color and switch this over to an environment texture. Now click on open and load in whatever HDR image you downloaded. I'm gonna load in Simon's Town Rocks. And now we have a real life environment or a real world environment lighting our scene. Let me press numpad 5 for perspective view so you can see my environment. The problem is our knife is still just a diffused texture, so it's not really reflecting anything, so it's hard to gauge that normal map. So what I'm going to do is turn metallic up to 1, and I'll turn roughness down to 0. Basically makes a mirror for us. And now we can properly see our normal map in action and make sure everything looks good. And it looks perfect. Now, my knife is not going to be this reflective. It's going to be more matte, in fact. So what I'll do is I'll keep roughness at 0.5, and I'll turn the base color to a very dark gray and take a look at it like this. And that is looking pretty sweet. All right, so that's actually going to do it for the baking part of this tutorial series. Now, don't forget we baked our normal map at a very large size. So now you can go ahead and scale it down in some image editing software to whatever size you want it to be. I'm going to leave mine as is for now, though, until I'm finished all the texturing. And now I'm going to go over why exactly we baked at 32-bit instead of 8-bit. So baking normal maps at Blender's default 8-bit produces this image. It looks fine to the naked eye, but when I increase levels in Photoshop, you can clearly see the color banding instead of smooth gradients. And this is what that color banding looks like when I apply it to a reflective surface in Blender. Not smooth at all. This is actually acceptable for grungy materials or matte materials, since roughness can hide all that banding. So you can actually get away with a default 8-bit bake sometimes. But in contrast, this is our final 16-bit normal map. Much better. And after we bake, you can even reduce the bit depth to 8-bit in software like Photoshop in order to reduce the file size if you need to. Reducing the bit depth down to 8 in Photoshop will have dithering applied to it, which is basically noise that helps hide the color banding. So after reducing the depth in Photoshop to 8-bit, this is what the final normal map looks like in Blender. Not too bad, certainly better than the default 8-bit bake with all that severe color banding. So that's actually going to do it for this video. In the next part of this series, we'll be doing the texturing, probably in Substance Painter, we'll see. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for new videos every weekend. And if you have any useful information on normal map baking, please let me know in the comments. And until the next video, I'll see you around.